Ah, hello everyone, here we are with Dishonored. I am going to be doing an all-collectibles walkthrough of Dishonored with you guys today here with some commentary with it on the side. This is going to be a heavily, you know, um, how do I want to put this? This is going to be one of those walkthroughs that's got a lot of, you know, high chaos stuff in it. So we're going to be killing everybody and anybody for the most part, and we're not going to be caring about that, and it's going to be fun. I'll put the subtitles on for you guys because I know the audio quality is a little low. I've been um, working as much as possible with the um, the audio settings here. I know my recent commentary on games like uh, Zombie here, you know, the... Uh, PS4 version of Zombie U have not exactly had the best commentary um, levels, so I've been working on that. I've been working on that since my Super Metroid commentary, and I think I've got about the right balance, but um, bear with me if things are not exactly perfect on that. I will do my best to keep making things better as much as possible. So we want a decent amount of brightness here. We're going to be playing on the novice mode or the easy mode. I think they just call it easy here. Um, <laughs> The reason we're doing that is because the game doesn't actually change that much based on raising the difficulty, and you actually get your mana to recharge a little faster, so almost all speedrunners will um, will basically play the game with this kind of uh, setting. So, you know, if you aim to do the game fast, this is the normal setting, and it makes things a little easier for the most part, so we're just going to be playing on that setting. And as I've said in previous walkthroughs, never feel bad about playing a game on easy. Sometimes it's the best decision you're ever going to make. Because, you know, you can have a good time with it, and who cares about the difficulty is always my opinion on it. But here we are in Dunwall. Here's our buddy Corvo coming back from a whaling uh, ship journey to other isles where he asked if they could help him out with the plague. See, this is a whale punk kind of empire. See the whale? Uh, where whale oil is powering all kinds of technology, particularly from the future. Based on the year we have here, roughly, it's about 15 years before, before around 1850. Um, if I'm not exactly right on my dates, then I can be off by that, but we're around the year 1835. Now, um, whale oil was actually popular around the 1830s, so that's historically accurate, but this is kind of a whale punk, uh, you know, empire version of basically what good old England would kind of look like. I mean, a lot of the style of design here is English, um, for the most part. So, we're kind of in a, you know whale empire um reimagining of good old you know england during around the year 1835 our main character is corvo atanu this guy is a buddy boy who happens to be a great swordsman and this won him the uh, ability to go and work for the empress as her personal guard uh, bodyguard so he's kind of like a royal member of stiff you know and uh, he gets a bunch of perks with that and also gets to be with the empress and stuff like that, but they won't really mention that until the second game. So the Empress has a daughter, but she does not actually have a husband. You can guess whose daughter this actually is. It's Corvo's daughter, by the way, Emily here, who, you know, he clearly loves like a daughter, even though he's not going to be playing hide-and-seek with her. What a shame, right? So, um, yeah, anyway. But, um, yes, so this is good old Emily, and uh, yeah, She's a princess here for the Empress. The Empress, you know, rules the Empire here. And, yeah. So, here we have um, our good buddy Campbell. We're not going to watch all the cutscenes. This is Campbell, the High Overseer. This is Sokolov, um, a very Renaissance man in terms of being kind of like a super genius dude. He, You know, he's a jack-of-all-trades, which is really what the uh, Renaissance man title means for the most part there. But, um, yeah, Sokolov, he's a genius. He's a real Leonardo da Vinci type dude and you know he's really cool you know but he also has his loyalties in interesting directions but that's one of the fun things about dishonor the characters are so um well i guess they're not really the deepest characters but they're interesting of course what we really care about is the gameplay what other games let you summon rats it's like the b power from bioshock but on like steroids so it's pretty awesome Anyway, this is the royal spy master here. Um, he's like the guy in charge of doing all the spying and conspiring and stuff like that, but not against the Empire. He would never conspire against the Empire. No. That could just never happen. No way. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so here we go. Here's the area. Here's the palace back here. This is the palace, Dunwall Tower. And over here we have a building, and the prison is right next door. There's the prison. See, because you always keep your prisoners right next to the royal palace. That's just always a great design, you know. Uh, yeah. 
But we're just going to look over towards this, like, rooftop over here. No reason, just, just like, looking out, you know, let's, let's hang out here. Jump up and down, see if there's anything going on on the rooftop, because why wouldn't there be, right? Hmm. Yeah. Well, who are these people who just magically appeared out of nowhere on the rooftop there? Yeah, I wonder. Why are they wearing masks and, like, carrying blades and looking like they're going to assassinate people? Well, bam. Okay. Yep. So, Corvo here is going to have to defend everybody. And even if you're doing a non-lethal playthrough, defending the Empress is okay, because it's necessary. You're the bodyguard, so if you're good or bad, it doesn't really matter. You still have to shoot at the bad guys. Yeah. Unfortunately, the bad guys have magic, you know. There's our good buddy Dowd. We'll be playing with as him and uh, some future DLC additions to this walkthrough. So, yeah, our good buddy Dowd, the great assassin who has magic. And just freaking killed the Empress. And kidnapped her daughter. Aw. Too bad for good old Jessamine here. She really meant well. She was a good Empress. And yet, bam, she's dead. Cruel fate, huh? And then, of course, also, guess who they're going to blame for doing all that? But I didn't even do nothing. This is where Corvo should point out that magic people showed up and, like, tried to, you know kill the Empress, and also he wouldn't do that, you know, and also run away. <laughs> yeah, I know, there's not really a good argument for clearly the fact that he didn't do it, because guess what? The Empress is dead, and Emily disappeared. I guess you could make the good point that Emily, you know, disappeared, and that, like, you know, clearly you didn't do that, so um, if you can't find her on the grounds, guess where she went off to? It's because she got kidnapped, you know? Also, the fact that your blade is not, like, covered in blood. I mean, I think that should be an obvious part of this. Um, but, anyway, Corvo's going the silent routes, or whatever he said really just did not work well. So, yeah, there we are now in prison. It's been about six months here. And, yeah, um, we just found out in that cutscene, which you guys got to skip, that um, the two bald head guys and the bald head brigade, as the completionists would call them, uh, those two guys just happen to have set it all up, you know? They set it all up. They're the ones who had the Empress killed and kidnapped and all that kind of stuff. But we're Corvo, and we, uh, we have gotten a key out of our cell, so we still have a chance to escape, which is what we're going to do. We're going to escape and loot this place. Now, you can go all non-lethal and just, you know, knock out people, but we're not doing that. We're going high chaos all the way. Well, bam. Ha ha ha! You fool! You think you can beat me? The great Corvo? I think not. Ha ha ha. Yeah, some guys will throw some stuff at you, but they're not really much of a threat from up there. Shut up! Stop throwing things at me. What did I even do, man? Huh? What did I do? I just murdered some peoples. Don't worry about it, you know? Do not worry about it. Anyway, we're also going to be going for a lot of the coins in this game, because it's not really fun if you don't go for all the coins. I mean, we're not going for all the coins, because that's a nightmare. This game actually counts every single coin, so it's 100% for this game. is technically only collecting every single coin. But we are not going to do that. We'll get as many as possible, but I do not have the patience to collect all of the coins in all of the levels. I also do not know where a bunch of them are, particularly on the second level. I have tried for some of this, but, you know, still... You can block with your sword like that, and then, come on, come at me. You can block at the last minute and attack the dudes afterwards. So these guys are technically just doing their job, but we do not care about that at all. We are Corvo, and we are assassinating everybody who is a problem here. Just, well, bam. Also, there's a pouch right here. Grab that. Good times, good old Corvo. Yep, you'll, you will take fall damage in this game, and it actually comes in an interesting number of varieties. So that's always fun. Here's your first audio diary, if you care to listen to it. It's right here. There won't be a lot of these, unlike a game like Bioshock, for example, but there are a decent number of them. So we'll go through all that kind of stuff. And yeah, um, we're just going to be assassinating our way back to the top. So we have to grab this explosive right here, and uh, then run on back out of here. Um, if you're doing this non-lethal, then it's like a really tough mission, because you have to, you have to constantly be doing stuff and dodging stuff and whatever and you got to not be seen a lot of the time if you're going for non-lethal ghost and it's not really a point in doing non-lethal if you're not going to go for ghost so 
But when you can just kill everybody in your path, the game gets a lot, lot easier. Which is what I just like to do. I mean, come on. You get all the coins, you get to kill everybody, you get to have fun, you even get a good ending. Spoiler alert. It's not exactly a good, good ending, but it's a pretty good ending, I think. Huh? Huh? You hit me, bro? Huh? You think you can get me? I don't think so. You can't beat up the Great Corvo? Huh? Yeah, these guys are not the master swordsmen that later characters are, but, you know, still. This is also about as challenging as they're ever going to get. They're all not that good at sword combat. All we have to do is block, and they, like, stagger back, and then stab them in the face. Cut off their head, etc. This game isn't violent. Don't be ridiculous. And, of course, you can restore health through quickly eating huge amounts of food. And, yeah... That doesn't. That all holds up to scrutiny. <laughs> yup. Anyway, Dishonored's a fun game. It's very similar to games like Bioshock. It's got a little more of a stealth focus to it here. Um, if you want. Or you can just run around like I do and just kill whoever's in your way. So, like this guy. Huh? Yeah, you can just, like, slice them all down. So, we're just doing that. I think we'll conclude this first part once we get to the sewers, which is coming up real fast here. But make sure to eat all the food. Leave no food for everybody else. This door will close like this. And if we want to get out of here, of course, we need the explosive. So, that's what we're doing. The best way to get away from an explosive is to stand right in front of it, by the way, guys. We all know that. And to run up against it, too. Ugh. Yes, we made the bridge. Okay, making the bridge is a whole thing. It's pretty cool. And they haven't seen us yet, see? All these dudes like, hey, where'd he go, you know? Anyway, we made the bridge, but make sure to land in the water. Um, in real life, if you land in the water from a great height, you will take a huge amount of fall damage, and that will hurt you. But in Dishonored, if you land in the water from any height, you know, and not like with, you know, if the water is not even that deep, you know, <laughs> then you will take no fall damage. So, bring in how that works. We'll be showing that off later when we get to beating the Lord region and all that. But anyway, that's 12 minutes in. That's our first part, basically. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, have yourself a fantastic day, and I will see you guys next time with the next video. Hope the commentary is all gone well so far. It's interesting. It's cool. It actually sounds good and doesn't sound terrible like previous um, attempts have been. But yeah, hope it's good. I'll see you guys next time with the next video. Stay tuned. I'll see you then.